Welcome everyone. My name is Hannah Howard and I am the National History Day in Iowa Program Coordinator. And today, uh, State Reference Librarian Kelsey Berryhill is going to be giving us a presentation on using State Historical Society of Iowa's digital resources. Kelsey, I will hand it over to you. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Hannah. So as Hannah mentioned, my name is Kelsey Berryhill. I am the reference librarian for the State Historical Society of Iowa's Research Center in our Des Moines office. Um, so today we're going to be exploring a little bit more of our digital resources and how to access those as well as some search strategies for you to, you know, kind of go through those materials that are available online. So if you want to go to the next slide. Perfect. Uh, so the State Historical Society of Iowa's Library and Archives exists to identify, record, collect, preserve, and share resources on Iowa history. Um, so today we are going to go through what we have digitally, but we have much more available um, at each of our research centers. We have one in Des Moines and we also have one in Iowa City. So um, those are also both great resources uh, for folks to use, but today we're gonna be focused on what is available online. So today we're going to be going through this website um, on this page on our website is focused on our digital resources. Uh, we're going to be going through um, kind of each one that will be significant for you and your students um, that may be useful while going through National History Day projects. Um, students and other researchers are feel free to explore other portions on the website on the collections tab, which is on the left. Um, there will be some indexes and some reference guides in those, but we are going to be focused on these digital collections. Um, that students can do remotely. So starting off, um, there is a section on that page talking about our historic sites. Um, on the, under that, the National Register of Historic Places is a really great starting off point if you're looking for a specific place. It'll also give jumping off points for other resources. So if your project is related to a historic house, a historic building or a historic neighborhood, um, you can check there uh, for these National Register project files. So does your project relate to a certain group of people? Is there a church or a neighborhood that was important to that group? It's possible there might be information here. Um, so I highly recommend kind of toying around with that. Uh, some of these nomination files are available online and it'll give um, potentially some photos and some other jumping off points for other sources that may be useful. Um, under the other section of manuscripts, newspapers, photographs, and documents, we'll talk a little bit about the photographs and the newspapers more in depth, but I wanted to talk a little bit, just touch on um, a few of these, including the historic diaries. Uh, these are, there's about a dozen diaries of children that relates to rural and small town life. Uh, these are great primary sources if your project is focused on one of those things. Uh, we also have a Robert Ray digital collection, which is really great if you have a project relating to Southeast Asian refugee settlement um, here in Iowa in the 70s and 80s and other support programs. So I wanted to shout those two out. Um, and then I think we're going to talk first a little bit about the that in Abraham Lincoln document, which is on the next slide. So is a um, portal of documents that are related to Abraham Lincoln within the State Historical Society of Iowa's collection. Um, if you have a project that is related to Abe Lincoln at all, I highly recommend kind of going through and doing some searching here. Uh, you can see what we have. You can find transcriptions of the different materials um, and do some, they all have basic keyword searching, which is available th online through this website that is, you know, really useful um, for those sorts of things. I also want to point out that this Iowa Heritage Digital Collection is pointed at, is um, put on by the State Library. Um, so if you click on that Browse Collection, which is at the top of that green section, um, you can then see which is on the next slide. You can see all of the different collections that are available within this portal. So these are not just going to be State Historical Society of Iowa collections. There might be some, not there might be some, there are some from the University of Iowa, the State Library of Iowa, a lot of different public libraries have put um, different collections on this portal. So I recommend kind of browsing through, they are organized by topic. So there are different events and maps and things related to music and specific people. Um, so I highly recommend if you're working on an Iowa topic to go through this list. Um, 
um, and see if there's anything that might be useful. Um, one thing to note that for this is because this is an aggregate of a lot of different places putting their collections in one spot. For citation information, you'll want to make sure that you're looking at a specific item. Um, each item will have a rights and reproductions and or contact information field, and then you'll want to um, use that as some of your citation purpose. So just touching on that. Um, and so now we're going to go a little bit back to Shishi Collections for the next slide. Yes, so on that digital resource page, there is a link to different maps. Um, so these are called Sanborn maps, the specific one that we have an image of right here. Um, these were used for insurance purposes way back in the day. This is a fire insurance map from Burlington in 1888. Um, however, these are really interesting um, into having great visuals for places, understanding local communities and how they're set up and what is important to them. So you, as you can see, this is um, one of the, not one of, this is the courthouse that is of, in Burlington. And you can also see different businesses that are available. So if you're working on a project that is, you know, once again, kind of related to a place, these sandbar maps are really great visuals um, that you could potentially use in your exhibit or your website or something like that. So then uh, I think what people generally are most interested in is going to be photographs. So for photographs for the State Historical Society, there are two entry points into digital um, portals for our collection. So this first one is going to be our Flickr page, which is there's a link on that digital resource page. And then here we have the direct link. Um, these are organized both by topic and also by collection. So you can notice that we have some very specific collections that are here, like the Robert Patton collection, the Leroy Smith Glass negative collection. But we also have items grouped together by topic, like baseball. Um, I know Iowa and World War One. So these are going to be things from various collections that were put together um, for things that are of interest. Um, the if you go to the photo stream tab on Flickr, it allows you to search by keyword. I highly recommend searching kind of as broad as possible. I also recommend, you know, kind of trying different search terms to see what would work for you. Um, make sure to look at the caption that is provided and not just make assumptions regarding the image of the photograph, because um, as on the next slide, we have um, a little bit more context in the caption of the photograph. So this is the top section of this is the about page about the Robert Patton photograph collection. Robert Patton was a printer um, in the Des Moines area. And so on each of these collections, there's going to be a little about link that you can click on. So this one gives a little bit more information about Robert Patton that, you know, might give you some more context. And this actually also gives you an article to use um, that you can read through the Iowa Heritage Illustrated, which is another great resource. But then you can look at each individual photograph as well as the caption to get more context about that. Um, and each of these captions will have the collection name and also which facility to um, that the photograph originally came from because the Slicker page includes both things from Iowa City and from Des Moines. Um, so if you need to get a scan of something, that's a kind of important to know. So that way we can direct you to the right staff person. So our next um, way that you can access photographs in our collection is through our special collections catalog. So this is available on our website. Um, if you go to iowa.manisisinc.com and if you click on the special collections section on the left-hand side, it will bring you to this page. Um, we have other parts of our catalog for the library and for the archives and also for um, the museum that, you know, if you do some searching and you find something that may be of use to your project, certainly contact our staff um, for if there is a book or a manuscript finding aid that you find that may be interesting. But right now we're just talking about our photograph section, which is in the special collections. Um, so once again, I highly recommend just searching really broadly, doing several searches for different terms um, within the same kind of field, depending because there might be different keywords for different things. So on this next slide, I just did a general search for the Civil War, just really broad. I know that we have a lot of things regarding the Civil War. So if we just did the search, then you know we can see some of what we have. One thing to note is that not everything in that we have in our collection is available in this catalog. But so I did a search for the Civil War. 
um, you'll see that some of the results have images and some of them only have finding aids. Um, but if you click on something that only has a finding aid and there is an image that is partic of particular interest, sure, certainly reach out and we can see what we can do. But I went ahead and clicked on that first result with an image, which is that Arden Acres photograph collection, which you can then see um, a little bit more about this collection. You can see other sort of subject headings, and then you can see um, a selection of the digitized images. So you'll see that on the right hand side of the record, it gives the caption, the photo number, and just a little bit more information about what it's about. So if you're finding something of interest there, I highly recommend you note the collection name and the photo number and which facility that the photograph is from, reach out, and then that way we can provide you a scan. Um, so at the bottom, you'll see there's a location, DM, that's us in Des Moines. Um, if you see anything that is IC, that is clearly Iowa City. So switching gears just a little bit, we're going to talk about newspapers. Newspapers are a really, really great primary source for folks doing any sort of topic. Um, I know with the photographs, that's probably geared more towards the exhibits and the websites, but newspapers is really great for any project that you're doing for National History Day. Um, so focusing on the items that are available online, we have three different um, digitized digitization partners that we work with um, for different Iowa newspapers. The first one is the Iowa Digital Newspaper Project. Um, this is part of Chronicling America, which you may or may not have heard of. It is through the Library of Congress. So we work with them to put newspapers available online. It is really great for early state history. We have a lot of newspapers that are either from the Iowa Territory or are from like the 1840s, 1850s when we were really young as a state. Um, and then it's also really great for other marginalized communities. So I know that we have newspapers in German on Chronicling America, as well as Swedish and Norwegian. We also have the Iowa Bystander, which is Iowa's um, African American newspaper um, from when it started in 1894, I believe, to 1921, that is available through Chronicling America. Um, Chronicling America is also really great for other states. If you are working on a project and it's just not Iowa related, I highly recommend Chronicling America. So that's the first one. The second is Advantage Archive. This is really great for specific, very small communities. So if you're working on a project in a small town or a small county, I highly recommend checking out Advantage to seeing if there are newspapers available through there. Um, and then Newspaper Archive is really great for general keyword searches. They have a keyword search as well as a person search. So, um, and it is much more broad. It has a lot more modern newspaper. So I highly recommend that as well. Uh, newspaper Archive, this link on our newspaper page will take you back to our digital resources page. So it's a little bit of a new maneuver um, and you should be able to access it at home. If it's giving you some issues because it is a subscription site, um, try clearing out your cash, try clearing out your cookies and trying again. Um, and that is also available at each of our research center sites. So just some examples from newspapers. So one thing that I wanted to mention that for newspapers, particularly older newspapers, is that they look a lot different than more modern newspapers. So on the left hand side, we have a copy of the Iowa State Bystander from 1896. And then on the right hand side, we have the Cedar Rapids Gazette from 2013. So you'll notice that the older newspaper has a lot, it's a lot more text heavy, there's not any images. Um, so as you're kind of going through these sources online, one thing to kind of, you know, have a heads up as you're diving in is that it's going to look a lot, lot different than more modern newspapers that you might be used to. And then just some examples from that Iowa bystander, um, just some things I wanted to point out. One thing to note is that for historical newspapers, they're going to use historical language. So you noticed that um, on the left-hand column, uh, it says that it is the only Afro-American Republican paper in Iowa. Um, we don't use that term anymore. We would use African-American. Um, so that's just something to note um, as you're doing some searching, you might need to use terms that are not um, what we would use today, but they would use historically. So something to just keep in mind. Uh, these are just some blips from each of those, uh, that front page. So this first column is just a little bit more about news from 
different parts of the country. And then we have a small article regarding uh, a civil rights suit that was going on. And then one particularly interesting thing from these older newspapers is that there is a lot of kind of the social section. So who is going to visit whom, who got married, um, who recently passed away, who is putting on a fundraiser, all of that stuff. So that might not be necessarily great for National History Day, but it is you know, kind of interesting when you're going through these newspapers. Another really great thing about newspapers is you can get a lot of great ad information from the advertisements. Um, so these are from the Audubon County Journal, which is also available on Chronicling America. So on the left hand side, we have a full ad on the Iowa State Fair. So if you're working on a project regarding the State Fair, you can get more information about what sorts of events were happening, um, when the dates were, all of that great stuff. And then you also have a lot of things that seem like they are legitimate news articles, but they are actually just advertisements. So on the right hand side, we have what is actually an advertisement for a uh, kind of a health elixir sort of thing um, for the and but it's framed more as a newspaper article. So one thing to just be careful of as you're going through these historic sources is just that not everything may seem, you know, is as it seems. So even though this looks like a newspaper article, once you read it, you can very much tell that it's an advertisement. So just like we, you know, really suggest you think critically about your sources now, think critically about your sources, particularly with newspapers. Um, often counties would have rival newspapers. Um, so they would kind of skew the news one way or the other. You'll sometimes see editors kind of sniping back and forth one another. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Shifting gears away from primary sources, one thing I did want to point out is that we have a wide variety of secondary sources that are available online through our publications department. Um, so the State Historical Society of Iowa currently publishes the Annals of Iowa, which is the scholarly journal. Uh, it is still being published now. Uh, we also have previously we published the Palimpsest, which turned into Iowa Heritage Illustrated, which was the popular history magazine. So it's a little bit easier to understand. And also the Goldfinch, which was meant for kids kind of 12 and under. These are secondary sources, but it can lead you to a really great jumping off points for other primary sources that are cited in these um, and can also really give, particularly for the Palimpsest and the Iowa Heritage Illustrated, a really great overview of certain topics that are easy to understand. So if you um, need some clarification or if you're not really sure where to start, I highly recommend going to the publications portal, doing some keyword searching um, and seeing what you can find. So as an example, the um, pictured article is from the Palimpsest. It is about orphan trains. Um, and in that article, there is a photo and also some newspaper articles, and within that within um, that publication, there you know they cite some other collections that they use, which might give you some navigation points to other portions in either our collections or other collections that are available. So now we're going to talk a little bit about search strategies. Um, because there is a lot of information that's available online, you kind of need to have a game plan going in. Um, so we're going to start at the top with the red square or the red circle, sorry, and then go clockwise. Um, so we are going to first identify key concepts and terms. And one thing that you should really be doing when kind of doing your searches is to consider historical language and context. That's something that um, I brought up a little bit earlier with the newspapers, but you know, now we refer to World War I as World War I. However, back then they didn't refer to it as World War I because there wasn't a World War II. Uh, so then did they use the Great War? The Great War, did they use the war in Europe? Um, and then language in primary sources will different, differ differently in the, Language and primary sources will differ than secondary sources. Um, kind of like when I was talking earlier about the African-American newspaper, um, secondary sources will kind of you know, use more modern language. Uh, another thing to do is to brainstorm synonyms, related terms, and alternate spellings. Um, baseball used to be two words of baseball or courthouse instead of courthouse. Sometimes that happens. Um, sometimes in printing, particularly in early printing, you'll see what looks like an FF and that is actually an S. So as you're doing searching, um, you know, that's something that the digitization platforms might not catch. 
Another thing to note is that for names, they were a lot of times abbreviated. So you'll see WM for William, THOS for Thomas, um, and also a lot of times for women, you'll see things like Mrs. John Smith as opposed to Mary Smith. So as particularly for names, make sure that you have, you know, some different ideas of how things could be spelled. Also keep in mind, particularly for newspapers, if pages are fuzzy, if the letters look similar, you might need to rethink your strategy. Um, M's, N's, and U's all look very similar. Um, P's and Q's might look similar. So um, if you're doing a search and it looks like it's coming back with not real words, maybe you kind of have to incorporate some of that into your searching. Uh, also just, I would really highly recommend just making a list of different people, places and events connected to your topic, and then searching for all of those things because it's just a different way of thinking. So after you do that, uh, you can select relevant databases and resources. So are your terms likely to be in newspapers? Uh, do you think there might have been scholarly articles, articles published about your topic? Because then you can look in the annals or you could look in the palimpsest. Uh, would it be helpful to browse through photograph collections or other topical collections? Because if you think there might be photographs, that might give you other keywords that you can search for other sorts of material. Also, you can combine search terms. So I highly recommend that you start with a simple keyword search and then add more search terms if you get too many results, um, particularly for something like the Civil War or women's suffrage. There's going to be a lot of material out there. So things to consider include geographic regions, the timeframes, related terms. Uh, you can include the state or the county or the town or a year or a year range. Uh, you can also look for advanced search options to combine terms or set search limits. Um, so advanced searches will give you a little bit more things to play around with um, for to add additional search terms or add a location or something like that. And then you can run the searches in your resources that you picked out. You can review and then refine, refine the results. So are there too many results? You can add in more search terms. You can use advanced search limits or filters on the results page. Use you know, maybe try again and use a narrower term. If there's not enough results, which is also a problem that sometimes we run into, uh, you can try fewer search terms. You can try different spellings or try synonyms. You can try just broader search terms. Uh, maybe go back to your list of peoples and events and, you know, try one of those instead. So now we're going to go a little bit back. Um, so this is the Chronicling America page for, um, the Iowa newspapers. And so I'm just going to give you some ideas as to how you can, you know, use that advanced search feature. So on the Iowa page, you can click on each of these newspapers and browse through the issues. So if there's a specific community and a specific date that you're interested in, I highly recommend, go, recommend going that route. However, if you're just interested in things more generally, you can click on that advanced search option, which is at the top there, circled in red. And then that will lead you to a page that looks like this. So because we were on the Iowa landing page, Iowa was already highlighted. Um, and then the dates were already highlighted, but then I just plugged in a couple of search terms. So say that your topic is on the 19th Amendment and women's suffrage. Uh, I did a search for with any of the words suffrage and then with all of the words women and vote. So all of my results should have those three words somewhere in the page. And then I also did a limit search to only the front page, um, just because a lot of times the front page seems to be the easiest to read. These, I don't wanna say that they're most the most important articles, but they're the most high profile articles. Um, so for this, that might be useful. So once we click search, we can see that there are about 2,600 results. All of those red things are the results of the words that we picked out to search. Um, and then you can click on each of these newspapers and read through the articles, see if they are of use to you, um, and then download them and use them in your projects. If is too many results, you can go back to that advanced search tab and play around with the search settings and potentially get different results. said, my name is Kelsey. Um, feel free if you have any 
questions, comments, concerns about any of our digital resources, if you need um, a walkthrough or have more specific questions, please, please email us. Our email is history.research at iowa.gov. On our website, we also have a reference request form that you can fill out. You can also give us a call at either of our research centers, um, and those numbers are up on the screen there. So if you would like to talk to talk to a librarian or other staff member, we are more than more than happy to help um, with you or your students as you kind of go through um, and work on your projects and are navigating items that are online. So thank you very much. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Kelsey. We are so lucky here in Iowa to have such a wealth of resources for research, generally speaking, but especially for NHD. These are all great places to start. Thank you all so much for watching and happy researching.